Epictetus, the great Stoic philosopher, once emphasized the importance of surrounding yourself with people who uplift you, whose presence brings out your best. The idea that you become the average of those you spend the most time with is a familiar concept. Today, we'll explore this notion through a Stoic lens, discussing the seven types of individuals who can hinder your progress in Stoic philosophy and how to navigate these challenging relationships. Before we delve in, your support in liking the video would be appreciated to help continue the spread of Stoic philosophy. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing and activating the bell to stay updated on future videos. Type of people number one, the drama attractor. Picture your life's journey as a ship peacefully navigating through calm waters. However, on this voyage, you may encounter a formidable force known as the drama magnet, a person seemingly entangled in an unending web of crises, conflicts, and controversies, much like a turbulent whirlpool. The magnetic pull of their chaos has the unsettling ability to draw you into its vortex, initially captivating with what might be mistaken for passion or excitement. Yet, as you navigate within their sphere, it becomes akin to steering a ship through a tempest, exhausting and laden with potential dangers. Interacting with drama magnets proves to be a delicate task, for their issues tend to infiltrate your own, and their chaos has a contagious quality. Imagine a friend in constant fallout with others in your social circle, and before you know it, you're entangled in the drama. To effectively manage such situations, consider employing reflective listening. Mirror their words back without taking sides. Another strategy involves embracing selective unavailability. Value your time by disconnecting, turning off your phone during specific hours, and dedicating that time to focus on your work or personal development. Seneca's wisdom becomes particularly relevant in these scenarios urging you to relish the present without anxious dependence on the future. This mindset proves invaluable when dealing with drama magnets. Concentrate on the current moment, steer your ship calmly, avoiding the whirlpools of chaos, and stay resolutely focused on your journey toward personal growth and tranquility. Type of people number two, the victim. Life resembles a game of chess, where players begin with identical pieces, striving to checkmate the opponent's king. This strategic pursuit involves sacrifices and risks, yet some individuals evading accountability attribute every misstep to external factors. From their standpoint, they consistently face checkmate, attributing it to uncontrollable forces, fostering a narrative of perpetual struggle where they perceive themselves as powerless protagonists. While recognizing genuine challenges and systemic issues, the disgust victim declines responsibility, using their predicament as a perpetual excuse. If you find yourself entwined in their narrative, you may become the constant rescuer in their story. Handling a victim requires caution. Although being their savior is tempting, the Stoic approach advises compassionate detachment, expressing empathy and kindness without attempting to solve all their problems. Establishing firm boundaries to safeguard your mental well-being is crucial. Marcus Aurelius cautions against seeking revenge or adopting the ways of those who commit injustices. Resist being drawn into the victim's story. Seize control of your own game board. Make strategic moves and recognize that perpetual checkmate is often a choice, not a destiny. Play for growth and wisdom, not for revenge or pity. Type of people number three, the manipulator. Imagine your life as a cinematic narrative, casting you as the protagonist with a predetermined script, detailing twists, allies, mentors, and the climactic final act. Amidst this, a manipulator emerges, 
a clandestine producer, rewriting your story without your awareness, causing your plot to deviate unexpectedly. This manipulator, adept in emotional and psychological manipulation, employs techniques such as flattery, guilt trips, and deceit to subtly influence your decisions for their benefit. An example is a friend who persuades you to cover expenses by framing it as a favor due to personal struggles, eventually leading to your generosity being exploited. Dealing with manipulators necessitates strategic approaches. One method is fogging, which involves acknowledging the truth in their statements while resisting emotional coercion. For instance, if they suggest you cover dinner due to your success, you might respond by agreeing to your success but suggesting a fair split of the bill. Another tactic involves setting and enforcing clear boundaries. If the manipulator seeks financial assistance or tasks you're uncomfortable with, assertively saying no becomes crucial. Maintaining a calm tone and clear communication, you can decline while offering alternative support, preserving the friendship. Drawing inspiration from Stoic philosophy, particularly the teachings of Epictetus, emphasizes that while external circumstances are beyond control, one can always choose their response. Manipulators thrive on predictable reactions, exploiting kindness, guilt, or the desire for approval. Responding differently allows you to regain control of your narrative. In essence, recognizing a manipulator in your life prompts the realization that you hold the narrative pen. Despite a diverse cast of characters, the journey, your journey, must be guided by your values and decisions. Reclaim your script, resisting manipulation, and ensuring your life's narrative aligns with your vision. Type of people. Number four, the complainer. Encountering individuals who consistently find fault in various aspects of life, whether it's a friend, family member, or co-worker, can pose a significant challenge. Their perpetual dissatisfaction extends to everything from the weather and their job to the food at popular restaurants. Despite the initial inclination to simply ignore them, the persistent exposure to such negativity can have a draining effect on one's mental well-being. It's akin to a leaky faucet slowly depleting the reservoir of emotional energy. Stoicism, with its emphasis on focusing on actionable solutions rather than dwelling on problems, offers guidance in navigating such situations. Consider the scenario of collaborating on a project with a perpetual complainer. The meetings become exhaustive sessions of complaints, hindering constructive dialogue and significantly impacting the team's morale. This constant negativity may lead to disenchantment with the project and potentially life in general. Stoicism provides several strategies to deal with chronic complainers. Firstly, one can aim to limit exposure to such individuals whenever possible. If that's not feasible, perhaps due to familial or professional ties, the second option is to mentally distance oneself during their complaints. Viewing their grievances as a passing storm, loud and unsettling but ultimately temporary, reinforces the idea that it is powerless against the unmovable mountain of one's own inner tranquility. The third strategy involves steering conversations towards solutions or changing the subject to something more constructive. This aligns with the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius, who emphasized that individuals have power over their minds, not outside events. By realizing this, strength can be found in maintaining mental peace despite external negativity. This timeless stoic guidance encourages individuals to diligently guard their mental peace, ensuring that the chronic complaints of others do not deviate them from the stoic path of resilience and virtue. Type of people number five, the naysayer. Picture yourself as an artist, fervently crafting your masterpiece on canvas. Each brushstroke breathes life and depth into your vision. Suddenly, a critic enters your studio, 
scrutinizing your work. Are you sure about that color? It doesn't look realistic. Most artists never make it, you know. Their words akin to strokes of gray dull your once vibrant canvas with an unwarranted aura of doubt. Similarly, if you're enthusiastic about a new career path, having researched, consulted professionals, and taken preliminary steps. Sharing your excitement with a naysayer results in a barrage of reasons why it won't succeed. The market is too competitive. Do you possess the necessary skills? What if you fail? Their doubts become yours, shaking the self-assured vision you held. How to handle such naysayers, especially if they're close? One effective approach is seeking their advice instead of merely sharing your plans. Placing them in an advisory role reduces the likelihood of outright attacks and may elicit more constructive feedback. Another method involves positive confrontation. Instead of absorbing negativity, challenge them to propose solutions. If they claim a career change is impossible, counter with interesting perspective. How do you think someone could successfully make a career change? Recall the words of Stoic philosopher Epictetus. We have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. Listening isn't about absorbing all negativity. It's about discerning valuable input from mere noise. When naysayers cast shadows of doubt, step back, listen, reflect, and continue painting your life with the colors that resonate with you. Let no one transform your vibrant masterpiece into a dull gray landscape. Type of people number six, the time vampire. Imagine your daily routine as a finely orchestrated symphony with each instrument representing a specific task or commitment. Together, they create a seamless and harmonious balance. However, this tranquility is disrupted when the time vampire enters, screeching discordantly and drowning out your carefully crafted melody. The time vampire isn't necessarily malicious. It might be a colleague with incessant interruptions or a friend extending numerous social invitations. While these interruptions may seem insignificant, their cumulative effect can significantly disrupt your overall composition. To protect your symphony from the time vampire, consider using the Pomodoro technique, a time management approach involving 25-minute work intervals punctuated by short breaks. During these focused intervals, make it clear that you are not to be disturbed, establishing a boundary to safeguard your most productive moments. When dealing with a social time vampire, remember that saying no is not just acceptable. It is essential for preserving your well-being. Instead of offering elaborate excuses, a simple, I appreciate the invite, but I can't make it, suffices. Declining an invitation is not a rejection of the person. It is an affirmation of your own needs and priorities. Drawing inspiration from Seneca's wisdom, recognize that a well-lived life is long enough. Stoicism teaches us to treat time as one of our most precious resources, to be allocated wisely. Time serves as the canvas upon which we paint the portrait of our lives, and we should be discerning about who and what deserves our attention. In the grand composition of your life, ensure that each note, each instrument, and each melody align with your greater purpose. Resist letting the cacophonous intrusion of a time vampire throw your symphony into disarray. Hold the baton firmly, conduct your life with purpose, and ensure that every moment is a note well played in your harmonious masterpiece. Type of people number seven, the toxic positivist. This person radiates perpetual positivity, showering you with sunshine, rainbows, and a cascade of emojis. They urge you to embrace happiness, brushing off your struggles with a casual wave of glittery optimism. Picture your life as a garden, blooms, weeds, and pests coexisting. A toxic optimist insists on ignoring anything but the blossoms. If aphids infest, they say, 
Focus on the flowers. Banish negativity. Despite sounding uplifting, this approach may leave you feeling invalidated. Consider a tough breakup. Sadness lingers, seeking balance. The toxic optimist advises, smile, be happy, plenty of fish in the sea. This excessive positivity overlooks emotional complexities and life's challenges. How to tend your garden without letting toxic optimists trample it. Engage in discussions, embracing light and shadow. Respond to look on the bright side with, I'm grateful for health, yet it's okay to feel upset about this specific issue. Utilize emotional granularity, acknowledge and label nuanced feelings when pressured to just be happy. Seneca's stoic wisdom echoes, true happiness is understanding duties and enjoying the present without anxious dependence on the future. Balance duty and enjoyment. Stoicism embraces life's complexity. When toxic positivity rains down, step back. A garden thrives on both sunshine and rain. Embrace your emotional spectrum, nurturing your garden's richness and complexity.